Dr. Denise Black is joining us this morning to talk about menopause. Quite often you hear about the symptoms, the hot flashes, the night sweats, all of the things that we do hear about, but there's a lot of symptoms that we often aren't discussing. Yes, it's true that women are just now starting to talk more openly about menopause, and as women are talking about it, we're learning more things that are troublesome to women during the, this time of transition. What are some of those things that women might notice? Well, we always talk about hot flushes as being the most common thing, but there are a lot of other symptoms that happen during menopause. There may be sleep disturbances, there may be issues with mood, memory, concentration, and sometimes there's also issues related to pain during physical intimacy or some other things that women may be less comfortable talking about. And those all, in turn, can kind of have an effect on self-esteem overall. Absolutely. Uh, in our society, getting older is tough enough. But when you're dealing with a lot of the physical and emotional things that happen, as well as sometimes the weight gain that goes on, it can be a very difficult time for women. So what's the average age that women may be entering menopause? Statistically in Canada, age 51 and a half is the time when women usually enter menopause, but there may be symptoms for up to five to seven years prior to that. Wow, and what are some of those symptoms that people might experience before? Again, there'll be irregular menstruation or other uh, health issues in that respect. And again, the memory, mood, uh, sleep issues, hot flushes, etc. And the hot flushes can continue for several years after oh, menopause. Wow. Yes, and some of the other symptoms can even happen for a longer period of time. And how long on average is the actual menopause transition? Well, menopause actually refers to the entire phase of your life after that last normal period. Oh, okay. The transition usually takes about 10 years from the years before to the years after, before many of the symptoms resolve. But there are still some symptoms that linger on for a long time. So what are some things that women can do to feel better about themselves if they are entering this transition and you know they're not feeling their best? There are many things that women can do. First is to recognize that this is a change that happens. To talk to your girlfriends and your partner and your healthcare provider about some of the things that can happen. Things women can do for themselves. Regular exercise has been shown to improve well-being. Eating properly. For women who smoke, stopping smoking improves a lot of the symptoms. Really? Yes. And of course, the combination of diet and exercise can help to prevent that midlife spread that so many women experience. And when you feel better about yourself, everything just seems a little bit better. Well, and how important is it to have these conversations, to talk about it, to not just, you know, sit at home alone and going through these symptoms, to actually express it? It's vital, and just to make a point, a lot of women would rather search the internet, self-diagnose, and try to manage problems rather than talk to a healthcare provider. And certainly there seems to be a lot of discomfort in talking to their partners. So I would encourage women to talk to those people that are important to them, to their partners, to their healthcare providers to get the best advice possible. That is great advice, and especially if you are going through that, to feel your best and to, to feel very good. Especially going into the summertime, you want to be able to enjoy your life, get out there and exercise, eat right, and feel better. Thank Absolutely. you so much, Dr. Thank you. More BT coming up right after this.